I'm going to show you the, um, the setup of my sailing rig. It's a bog standard endless river rig. Um, I bought it as a kit. Um, if you are happy to, you know, do bits of woodwork yourself, I mean, all this is is a is a plank with a hole in it. Um, you know, it's not a complicated thing. It's expensive if you buy it as a sailing thwart and very cheap um, if you know how to make one yourself. Um, but anyway, things were as they were. I, I bought it all as a rig. Uh, these are fiberglass poles. I keep them clipped in with a little bit there. A ski, um, a ski velcro is another good thing to keep them keep them attached in as well. And I have them attached at the front. I just have them tucked in an old washing up bottle. It protects the ends a bit. So the sail itself. Like this, put the bag in your pocket so you don't lose it. You want to find the uh, bottom corner, and then I did ask in this river about this. I think it was, you know, I think it's fairly academic, but I asked them anyway, and they recommend the pole with the button that end first in the main upright bit. Feed that. So then I, this is the order I do it in, not to say it's right, it's just the order I do it in, then down through there and feed it into this fiddly piece of rubbish, which is their mast for, I mean it's convenient because it lays down because it lays down flat if you want to put a bag under there, but it is fiddly to get um, to get the bottom of the mast foot, uh, to get the bottom of the mast into. An alternative mast foot would be, you know, a block of wood or a block of foam with a hole in. Um, some people even have like a block of wood that doesn't permanently live in the bottom of the boat, and they velcro it into the bottom of the boat. This rope here, you can tie down. Um, you don't need to, but I tend to because it keeps the pole pushed further into the bottom of this sleeve, otherwise it can wiggle its way out. You should see me. Yeah, and the way I do that is round, round again, and then some half hitches or something. You know, it's not, it's not complicated, and you want to be able to get it down fairly quickly as well. I mean, that's not a proper quick release knot, but that will come undone quick enough. So there it is, standing up. No shape yet though, that's what you want your other pole for. So you want the end now with the hole in. Up the sleeve. And then there's this pocket arrangement down here. Tighten up your straps. And now you are ready to go, and you can see I've got the the sheet, this blue rope. Uh, Endless River actually supply a slightly shorter, thicker rope than this. Um, I put this on thinking longer might be more useful in case I needed it for anything else while I was out and about. But it's just that little bit too long. Uh, it gets in the way. It's a bit annoying, so I might put the short one back on. Just leaving Silver Bay after setting up the sail. don't need to pull in to set it up, but it was easier, uh, it was easier to film. As you can see, paddling with the sail is quite annoying. Of course, naturally, as soon as you put the sail up, the wind goes in. You can see the water moving a bit more, slightly further out. Right, we'll try this. So, I'm going to move back so you can see better. Take the end of your sheet through the back seat. And then you can go around your, uh, your kneeling thwart. You can go around 
go around your centre port, whatever. So you can just have it held, you can kneel on it. Slippery clove hitch isn't a bad one. You know, that's a quick release knot. Or, if you want it to be really free to let go in a hurry, highwayman's hitch. That's held there, which allows you to jam a paddling, rudder, or indeed paddle if you want to. Try and move out into the wind and see if we can get anything going. So at the moment, the sail is set, well, as good as it can be set. But if you did need to bring it in anymore, you can got it tied off, kneel on it, tighten it up, and as you can see, we've got absolutely no wind now. Try again later. There's a tiny bit of wind, because the wind is coming slightly from over this shoulder, going that way. That's why the sail's pushed out to this side of the boat. This is, the paddle is acting a bit like a lee board because it's on the lee side of the boat. You can do more things with this than just use it purely as a rudder. I mean, you can get you can get ruddering capability through jamming. So at the moment I've got it jammed in at the back. But if I bring that jam forward, turning the boat to go across and then into the wind. And then if I bring it back, turn into more of a downward run again. You see a slight trail of bubbles and disturbance coming off the back of the boat. I mean, I'm not going as fast as I would do um, if I was paddling, but equally I'm not paddling. I can now adopt my favourite paddling position if I want, which is sitting down with my feet up paddling position my tandem partners will be well aware of. So paddle sailing, as well as the obvious benefits of you've got paddle power as well as wind power, actually has another benefit. Again, I'm not a sailor, I'm purely going on what I've been told. But by putting that bit of extra forward power in, you're actually magnifying your paddling power causes more air to flow over the sail, which gives the sail greater effect. Now, when the sail is just doing as it is now, just pushing us downwind, I can't see that being true, but when the sail is being used properly as a foil shape and you know, providing that drive um, for the boat which acts against your lee board and the boat to move forward. I can see how that would work, I can see how it would make sense. Right, so I'm on a broad reach which is going across the wind. I've got a paddle jammed down the side as a lee board. I can bring it further back the boat turns to run downwind, or I can put it further forward and the boat will turn into the wind. And bring it back to a middle position to continue the reach. It can go upwind a bit, but not much. The sheet, which is this rope here from the bottom corner, if we look under my armpit, it goes to the back of the boat and then I've got it set up with a highwayman's hitch on the centre thwart so I can pull it if I need to. I don't know whether you can tell by looking at the paddle. The boat is actually moving forwards, honest. <laughs> 